everyone. Linda and Arlene, and we're here for episode three that we're continuing on our energy episode for the month. And this time we're speaking about mental energy. And the mental energy is the focus of our energy. So mental energy is the ability to perform cognitive tasks like problem solving, sustaining, attention, focusing, and making decisions. The positive emotional state, your feelings, not only, not only does it feel powerful, but represents more energetic conditions, the so-called mental energy. You know, mental fatigue happens when you have anxiety, sure. common symptoms of mental fatigue, lack of vitality, low resilience, and setbacks and misfortunes, depression, physical fatigue from it, sleep issues. Geez, I could check off some of these. This isn't too good. <laughs> Increase in illness and poor eating habits. That happens when you're under mental stress. And I think <clears throat> this world, as it's speeding up, and we know that it's been speeding quicker and quicker. You know, there's scientific proof. Do you know this, Linda? That the in the natives, because you're native, they've said the star, they, they quote saying the stars are in a different position. And they yeah. say actually the, the globe, the world has shifted a little bit. So the app. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Right? Is that correct? That's true. That's correct. The pressures and everything is just speeding up faster and faster. And faster. I can't believe, you know, the time frame, however, all the months keep going quicker, 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 quicker. How to clear your mental energy is, of course, we're going to touch again upon meditation, stretching exercises, get out in nature, move your body, go complaint free. <laughs> right. And smile often. Yeah. You and I don't have a problem with that. No, we're always <laughs> laughing. So what affects mental energy? It is food, food, drugs, sleep, and diseases. And mental exhaustion, the brain receives too much stimulation or has to maintain an intense level of activity without rest. So this, again, goes to the physical where people are working, working incessantly, and they don't stop. And that affects all your other components in your mental because you're, you know, thinking, thinking, thinking. Well, giving too much to thought processes is, you know, how you, when you're even in school, how exhausted you are after studying. Yeah, you short circuit. Actually, and I don't know if you felt, it's like your brain hurts. Yeah. Right? It's actually you go, uh, it's like, <laughs> and the lack of mental energy is chronic stress. So chronic stress causes all of these things. Mental energy, some people are born with a genetic advantage. Others have illnesses and are genetically more susceptible to ADHD, anxiety, and depression. So some people come in and they just genetically disposed to have a higher mental state and others don't. Exactly. And, and then different things, as I said, illnesses and things like that could affect how people are. A lot of times, as you know, when babies are born, right? Um, yes. Things happen during the delivery. I mean, just going through the birth canal is such, you wonder how we come out because our brains are still pliable, but they're being smushed, right? Exactly. exactly. Babies that are forceps delivery where there's injury. My son had forceps. With, with, Mine uh, did too. So how do we reset our brains to be happy? And one is to laugh out loud. Laughter really makes it happen. We don't have an issue with that. Practice gratitude, you know, be grateful, hug a pet. Yeah. Make time to meditate, go on a na nature adventure, take a break and give your gut some TLC. Exactly. I don't know what it means by giving your gut TLC. I like my martinis. <laughs> I used to like a martini. I can't do martinis anymore. I know when you get older, it's uh, harder to, to deal with all of that. So what what are your thoughts on our mental our mental Well, energy? it's just like you said, but breathing helps. Breathe slow, breathe in and out. Notice your breath, notice the breath, listen to your body, and you will notice a lot of stress coming off, a lot of that mental stuff coming out. Cuz we create our own reality. So if you're in constant fight or flight, guess what? You create more of the same. Exactly. Exactly. If you're always worried about money, 
and you can't get a break on money, but you keep asking the higher round for help with money, but you think in terms of not having money, guess what? You create more of the same. Yep. You have to let it go and let it happen. This is a good line. What you feed breeds. Yes. I worked with somebody once and I told her that. And she never forgot that when I was leaving the job, she said to me, she goes, what you feed breeds. It's just like, you know, with our plants, right? If you take water away and the nutrients, what's going to happen? Right. It's going to yes. up and just, just go. It's going to be gone. And, you know, a lot that's going on in the world now. And now, like I said, I'm not going to go into, of course, you know, I know you talk a lot about the politicking. I'm not going there. But the news reporters and everything, they sensationalize so much and they feed that stream. Constant. They feed the fear. <laughs> constant, constant, constant. If we just cut it off. If you cut off from a person, it's going to shrivel up and go away, right? Well, maybe not the issues, but the, you don't have to jump on that bandwagon of overdue. They do it for money. That's the sad part. But I like the saying by Abraham, that which is like unto itself is drawn. You cannot create what you're not. So you have that which is like unto itself is drawn and look at your life and what you're representing and what you think every day. And be careful about judging too, because we like to, you know, my mom was quite the judger. So there was always, she sized people up and, and we can't do that. As much as it's part of our modus operandus, we have to allow every person their own, you know, catch yourself. And if you can, try to smile at people, even if they don't smile back. Because those kind of energies are shown on the other side. When you die, the, the things that are shown is what you did or to help someone else or to, to give someone else some positive energy. They say exactly, yeah. When we cross over, we're going to judge ourselves, <laughs> not somebody. They say it's like looking in this big book where the pages go real quickly. Yes. So back to when you're a child, say if you're on the school ground and you kick somebody in their shin, you're going to be that other child and you're going to feel it. Yes. So, yes. And you have to be very mindful. And it's true. A smile could shift, shift the energy. So a quick story, you know. Here we are. We, you guys won't be deprived of hearing stories because Linda and I have lived and been around the block quite a few times. So <laughs> <laughs> we have quite a few stories to share. But anyways, <clears throat> so one day I was going to work. This was my last job. I was working as a mobile x-ray tech. Oh, my God. And the company was horrible. But they told us. You know, we had, we had drive to places because it was mobile. And they said if we got in an accident, if it was our fault or not our fault, we would have to pay the first $2,000 out of our own pocket. I wonder if they took that to court, though, if they'd have to pay it publicly. I know, but isn't that crazy? I mean, oh, people so, are like that. But that was embedded in your brain. So I'm leaving for work one morning, right? So I'm in yeah. you know, the traffic, traffic's in front of me. And there was the stoplight and I had my foot on the brake. Yeah. I guess I must've lifted it off the brake. For, don't ask me why, but I, <laughs> I didn't hit the gas, but I kind of just rolled, just gently rolled into the car in front of, in front oh of me. Oh my God. And it just went like this. So gentle, Linda. It just went, whoop, whoop. Well, this deranged old man jumps out of his car. And all I'm thinking in my mind is say mental. What's going on in my mind? Oh, crap. $2,000. I'm going to be charged for whatever happens. I'm going to lose. And I'm thinking I'm going to lose my job. Da, 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 da. So he gets out of his car and I roll down my window. I don't even think I got. Oh, yeah, I did get out of the car at first to look. Linda, there was not, it was an old beat up. There was not one. There was no nothing. Not a dent, not a, nothing, because I gently just roll. He goes, oh, my God. And he was going spastic. He was going like off. Now, the old Arlene would be. <laughs> but, <laughs> I was working, you know, and I just was very calm and quiet. And I said, all right, what? What?" I said, there's nothing here. And I was showing him there's nothing here. He goes, you don't know what could be underneath damage that you could have caused. And I said. Okay, fine. I said, take it in someplace and have them check out your car. 
okay? And I went back to the car, I sat down, and he comes over to the window, and I said, here's my name and my number, and I gave him, you know, and I said, call me, because I want to take, you know, I said, call me. And I said, I'm so, all I kept saying is, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean for this to happen, it's, you know, have a great day, and I, I shifted, I swear to God, I shifted the energy, and he just quieted down, and I smiled at him, and I said, okay, and here's my, I said, here's the information. Do you know what? Nothing ever came of it. Did you get upset? Were you worried? Sure than shit I was. I, yeah, yeah, I was, because that was my livelihood, and I thought, oh, my God. In any event, the reason why I brought that up is, how do you react to things? Do you know what I'm saying? How do you yeah. get crazy with it? And how you could shift the energy around situations. If you're mindful and, you know, if you attack a person, you, know, you both start attacking each other back and forth, or you could bring it down. You could bring right. it down. I actually, when I had my business also, I had an audit. The IRS came in. And you, when you have a business, you do not want the IRS. I've never had the IRS. Yeah. So anyways, we had to go in. I had to go in and he goes, don't worry about it. I'll take care of everything. Well, he didn't. And she, she was attacking me, attacking me, attacking me, attacking me. And the, was, the, who, the IRS agent? The first thing she said to me is, don't worry, honey. The floor is not going to open up and swallow you in. And then she t proceeded to tell me, oh, the man that was sitting in the chair before you, his no he had a nosebleed and he was bleeding profusely. Because <laughs> his nerves were shot. She was just trying to unnerve me. You know, and all of a sudden it kicked in because I know energy, we're energy beings, okay? And I work with different forms of the light. White light carries all the colors of the spectrum. But specifically, if somebody's confrontational with you and they want to argue and fight, you put purple light. Now, if you can't imagine purple light, just say the words in your mind mentally, say it. And I, kept, I started doing that. And on a, I swear to God, on a dime, she stopped in her tracks what she was talking about, said, okay, we'll just do this and this and then, you know, turn it into me. When we left, the accountant I was with, he looked at me, he goes, what, what happened in there? And I just chuckled, you know, we had to go back a second time. And I, I looked at him, I said, listen, I know you think I'm nuts. I believe in angels and all, but I said, I'm telling you, just put, per keep saying purple light, purple light. And I will too. And she was wonderful. She turned completely around. No. We are very magnificent. I'm deviating off the topic here, but we're very magnificent beings. We're very powerful. Not coming from ego, but we're powerful beings. And we don't really, there's everything is out there for us and we can manifest anything we want. Not one of us is more important, more special than anybody else. I don't care who it is. But I also know you can use it for negative. I had a woman, I had moved down to Southern California and, and there was this girl I was renting her couch from her. And something happened to her, and she decided I couldn't rent her couch anymore. So I had to pack my stuff up, and I was so mad at her. She was standing there. We were talking. It was really for no good reason. And I, I was trying to get her to explain what she was doing. And I felt this anger and this hatred come out of my body. And when it hit her, you could see the look on her face. Like, you know, I didn't threaten the cold, you know, what you call her. I didn't threaten her with violence. I'm just saying that hate and that energy hit her so hard you could see her face change. And then I thought, I better get out of here. So I leave. So I find out later she had gone out to her car to go somewhere and her car went off a cliff. Oh, no. And her mother called a friend of mine and said, what did Linda do to my daughter? And she said, what do you mean? She I went in, she felt, went off a cliff and she had both legs broken. Oh. She was up in a thing. And she told her mother, Linda did this to me. Oh, my God. She says, Mom, I could see it. She gave me the bad juju. <laughs> but remember... That which is likened to itself is drawn. So you can't be going around cursing people because it'll come back on you too. Well, you know what they say when you judge, when you're judging stuff, right? You're like this, right? Look at yes. you're like this with the finger. And where are all the other fingers pointing? Where are the other fingers pointing? To you. Yep. Yep. So that's what you have to be aware of. You know, we all have our lives and our situations and exes we've been with and different things. And you hold that anger for that. Oh, it, it can... They say what it is, is when you hold that anger, it's like drinking poison and wishing the other person dead. 
that anger is affecting you yourself. And when that anger, when you drink it in like that, it gets stored again into our cells that we talked about. And that's where the disease comes out. That's where our diseases exactly. circulate. And like I tell people when, like my dad was really tough. I know he loved us, but you know, he was violent. And I would hold that grudge and hold that grudge. And then one day I was becoming, you know, aware. And I decided that I won't, I, you can't forget it. Because there's, even if I hear a child screaming, it brings up memories for me. Sure, it's a trigger. And, uh, but I have forgiven them. I, honest to God, have forgiven them. I don't forget. But you know what that also does? That takes the power away from him. He had no more power over me. So that's what I tell women who had bad husbands or bad lives. I say, or males, it doesn't have to be a female. I say, forgive them. You don't have to forget, forgive them. Because that takes away, basically you're saying, go, be gone. You have no more power over me. And that's the whole thing. We could either be empowered or we could be a victim. Exactly. And that's it. And this whole podcast beacons of balance is about living in balance and it's about empowering each other exactly it's about lifting each other up seeing the light in each other and living the best possible days on this little blue marble we call earth and happiness joy and inner peace and spreading it out to everyone else and the weaker ones that don't know and can't do it and just bring them along to right right to spark them so um, ending this episode, which is about our mental, it's balanced mentally. Be aware of things that are causing mental overload, whatever it is. Rest, eat nutritionally, and the best thing is oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. watch comedy. They said there's a thing. Norman Cousins, people, you could look it up. He was diagnosed, he had cancer, and he closed himself in his room for three months. And he watched like, he watched the Three Stooges and all comedy. And guess what? He was cancer free. He did it on No his- kidding. Yeah. Laughter. Actually, another thing I'm certifying in folks is laughter yoga. <laughs> because yoga, what yoga is about is breath work. And it's about moving your diaphragms up. And when you laugh, you're just unint- you're just raise your diaphragms so through laughter you're doing the yoga see we don't have to we don't have to do downward dog (laughs) remember that movie mad 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 world stanley kramer that was one of the funniest movies and i love jonathan winters and robin williams oh god you can you can google those and look up old johnny carson but you remember that show frazier well the brother had a horrible crush on the English lady that helped take care of the father. He had a horrible crush on her. And remember, he was married to that stiff, cold woman. Oh, the brother you're talking about. The brother did. And there was a scene. Niles. Niles. There was a scene where she was in the kitchen and he was nonchalantly talking to her. And he put his hands on the counter and he jumped up to go on the counter (laughs) and he hit his head in the overhead thing where the stove (laughs) He hit himself. I think he might have done it in real life. It was so loud. And he was holding his head. She's like, oh, my God. I laughed so hard. Because he was trying to be suave, you know. La, 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 boom. That would have been something I would have done. I remember going out on a date with a guy to a movie. And, uh, you know, we were coming in. We had our popcorn and our soda. Excuse me. Excuse me. And I slipped. Somebody had left, like, something on the floor. And boom. But of course, I get up real quick and I want to act nonchalant. But my knees were hurting after that. <laughs> we're, we're off topic here, but we have to laugh. It's laugh. Talk about a movie. I went in. I, first of all, I have night, but I can't see. So I go in. It's real dark, dark movie theater, old movie theater, right? And so I'm looking, looking, and I thought I saw seats. So I'm holding some, and I go, and I sit down, and I sat on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. So fast. And oh, I started God. laughing. The whole row started oh, laughing. My I, mean, how, God. I didn't know. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, were they upset or what did they laugh? Oh, I was a guy who probably was excited that I was sitting on. Oh him. my God. Oh my God. But I 
I still remember. Oh, God, that brought back a memory. That is so funny. That is so funny. And you know, when I was young, my dad was a, a fireman, so he could get us in the movies free. He used to go to the local store, 25 cents, we'd get those big candy bars and everything, about five pieces. And we went into the movies and we were late. We had our little bag of candy and we're going, excuse me, excuse me, you probably <laughs> see three fat heads, you know, we were young, we were little. And my brother had a sick sense of humor. He, We go to sit down and my brother caught one so loud and he locked his front feet in the front in the in the seat in front of him, his down below and up, and what whoa like that. And of course, everybody's looking. And I remember me and my sister just disappearing. It was so embarrassing. And talk about that because my first ex was a fireman, and we anyways that does, that's irrelevant to the story. But we went to see some major the major with a big big. It wasn't IMAX, but it was a big theater. And he's, and he's walking down the aisle. He went for popcorn. That, and like my accident with the cars, he stopped short, and a guy right behind. He stopped, and the guy's popcorn and soda went up in his face. Oh my gosh! I was so mad at him. Oh, but, I bet. <laughs> oh, did he buy the guy new popcorn and soda? <laughs> I don't oh gosh! I, of course, then I was mortified. It's like I don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get away. You go in the other row. I'm not with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, so we ended it remember laughter. That's good. to be the change you want to see. Right. And from our hearts to your hearts in balance, love, joy. And remember to love starting with yourself. Remember to subscribe, to listen, to watch, spread the word. And write in, tell us what you would like to hear. Uh, future topics. We're going to have a lot of good things coming on and a lot of um, future guest speakers and that also. Thank you, you guys. Cheers. Take care. Love you. Love you. Bye, honey. Bye.